All right, hey folks, Mark Locklear here with a quick screencast on chapter one. Uh, just This is gonna be sort of really basic right out of the gate. Uh, we're going to create our Hello World program in NetBeans and just generally look at a few other things inside the ID. Um, so you've got some experience with that. So with that, I'll share the screen. So you should see my NetBeans, um, uh, NetBeans application here. I've started up, hopefully the install went okay. Uh, so let's just walk through creating a new NetBeans program, uh, or in Java they're called projects. So I've been using this Java with Ant is is what you want. Maven and Gradle, sort of outside the scope of what we're going to talk about here. So just from this point forward with the rest of the class, you'll be using this Java with Ant to create your applications. Um, you can leave this default name here, or if you want to sort of name them based on the project we're doing. Honestly, it'd probably be better just from an organizational standpoint to put something like, you know, EX4. Generally, you don't want to sort of one of my gripes with software development students, you don't want, you don't want any spaces, uh, spaces, spaces or special characters inside these names here. So just don't do that. Uh, underscores are okay, or if you want to use camel case, uppercase and lowercase, that's okay, but uh, you don't want, you don't want any, any spaces here. And also don't rename the files. I'll mention this again, but be careful not to rename these .java files that you're going to be submitting to me for the projects. Also just note this project location that this is like I'm on a Mac and so this uh, slash user slash jmlock2, that's my, uh, that's the, the username that I log into the computer with. This will be similar for you on Mac. On Windows, it's probably under the uh, C colon users. Maybe I think it creates a NetBeans folder there, but you're gonna need to know where your files are being saved because that job, that, that .java file is what you're gonna submit to me uh, for the homework. Um, so just sort of be aware of, of this. You'll see it each time. You'll see this path each time you create a new pro program, but you'll need to be able to like use Windows Explorer or Finder to navigate directly to that folder to be able to get the .java file. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk more about that later, uh, the .java versus the .class file. Uh, the .java file is the raw code. That's what you're gonna submit to me. That's that way I can see it. Um, I can look at the code then give you feedback on it as well as compile and run that. So I'm just gonna leave this default name here for now and I'll do, and again, just leave all the defaults here. You're gonna want a main class there too. So I'm gonna hit finish. It's gonna go through some gyrations. So this is our Java application. So notice what we've got just right out of the box here is a, um, is sort of a vanilla um, featureless application, if you will. And in fact, I can go up here and click this little green arrow and run this. And like I get builds, notice I get build successful down here at the bottom. So the program doesn't do anything, but you've got a valid Java application. You could, uh, uh, you know, you could, um, you could compile this and then share it with someone else and they could run it. It's a valid application. Again, it doesn't do anything, but sort of all of the hooks are in place here. Uh, and I, sort of outside the scope of the class. You can read some history on like why public static void main is there and things like that. I'm just, it's just not worth, I, I just sort of, as a software developer, I generally sort of take like, take the stuff for granted as far as that just is what it is. This Java need, needs it to run. You can do more research on your own, on your own if you want to understand why, why that is. Um, also notice, so notice you can see the .java file over here. And in fact, I'm going to bring my terminal window into make this a little larger. And if I do LS here, so here's this Java application two, I'm gonna change directory inside of there. And then I'm gonna change directory inside the, uh, uh, the SRC folder. And then let me do that one more time. So here's the .java file here. So this file here I'm seeing in the finder is the exact same file I'm seeing here in, in the code here. And in fact, if I do like cat maybe, you know, so you can see the text here. This is the same text that's in, inside here. So just know that, that this .java file is what I'm going to, um, it, that that's what you're going to be submitting to, to me to actually grade. And then if I, um, yes, yeah, so I don't have a .class file there yet. 
Okay, so that's that. Uh, let's talk about the Hello World app. The, the uh, requirements for this first application I ask you to do is just uh, actually create a file that actually prints out Hello World. And so here we can use uh, system.out.println. No, system so let's stop here and talk about what we're seeing. So notice already we're seeing something sort of happening inside the ID as I begin to type. So just as a review, this ID, the ID stands for Integrated Development I Environment. And what that allows us to do is things like what you see here, sometimes called IntelliSense. But basically what it does is as you type methods that are available to you inside Java or any programming language, and this is not just a Java thing. If you're using an IDE that's set up for the particular programming language you're using, whether it's Python or Ruby or C++ or, you know, it goes on and on, all development environments, um, you know, appropriately configured give you this option of as you type uh, methods that are available to you in that particular programming language uh, will sort of pop up on your screen. So in this case I'm going to do a print line so I can choose that. I could hit enter here or choose that with my, my mouse and then I'm going to actually put some text inside quotes here. This is string text so it actually needs to be in quotes. So I'm just going to say hello world exclamation. And I'm gonna print this. And there it is. There's not really much to it, right? We've just printed out some text there. Um, also, just so you know, from this side, um, I just wanna go in here and if I do, um, just wanted to show you the, uh, the command line compile function. So if I do Java C and then uh, Java application two, now notice I've got a dot class file here. So this, when we talk about compiling code, uh, the .java file is the source code. The compiled code in Java is this .class file. And now I can actually run uh, Java 2. Let's see, .java. And notice I get the hello world here. And in fact, when I grade your homework, I use all I use entirely use the command line to grade your home homework. I use a, just a text editor to view the code to make sure it's structured properly and it's, it has all the things that I'm looking for with regards to the actual code. And then I'm going to compile it. Generally, I'll do that from the command line and then I'll look for the appropriate output here. So I just sort of wanted to cover uh, the, the command line part. Um, you know, just, just so you know, it's another option that you've got. But then also just from a file folder. Um, management standpoint, you sort of see where things live at. Um, these, these class and package files, don't fiddle with these, like whatever you name them at, at the beginning, I would just leave those in place. Um, in more sophisticated Java programs, you've got multiple packages uh, that are going to live, uh, that are going to be inside a, a single Java project. Generally, we're just dealing with a, a single package name inside a single project. So just for purposes of this class, uh, don't don't mess with any of that. Because if you do, it's, it's going to screw up. Um, uh, you, you're not going to be able to compile and run it. And when you submit it to me, I won't be able to compile and run it. That also goes for, again, the actual raw .java file. When you submit that, I, a, a lot of people tend to want to rename this file if they're trying to organize their files before they submit them to me. You know, if it's Java application two, they'll rename it to exercise one or exercise four. Well, again, you can't do that. You notice this Java application two, that name, the actual name of the file matches this class name. And that has to be, that's a requirement in Java. Those, the main class name uh, has to match the actual file name. So if you rename the file, uh, if you re rename the file, it's gonna make it so I can't compile and run it. And I'm gonna probably send it back to you and ask you to, fix it. I mean, I could fix it on my own and rename it for you, but I, I, I tend to find that people won't, if I, if I just do that and fix it for you, then people will submit it that way. And then I have to, that's an extra step for me to just be able to grade and compile your homework. Um, and then the last thing I would talk about is the uh, comments at the top. I'm asking you to put, uh, generally you, I ask you to put your name up top and then the, uh, the name of the class, which would be like CSC 151. And uh, then the date, so like I'm gonna say it's 26 May, 2020, something like that. So generally you want your name 
Um, I, I've just got the username here, which is sufficient, but if you want to sort of make it a little more formal, you can put your full name there. And then the, uh, the class CSC 151 and then the date. Always put that in the comments section at the top. Uh, I'll give you a couple, first couple chapters. I won't ding you on it grade wise, but going forward, maybe after chapter one or so, then I'll probably take off points if you don't put your, uh, if you don't put the name, uh, name, date, name, class, and date at the top. That just is sort of a sanity check for me to make sure you, you know, it's your work and you've done what you supposed to do. I think that is all for now. Uh, again, if you have questions, please let me know. Um, that's all for now. I'll, we'll see you soon. Oh, and also one more thing. I wanted to show you how to open an existing program because you'll need to do that. Well, it's just handy for a couple of reasons. Number one, you may want to open up some of the book files that you find, but also as a requirement, a lot of the, or some of the, um, some of the exercise will ask you to open an existing assignment and then um, go in and add to it or edit that. So this, that's just something you'll, you'll want to know. So I've got this old, uh, the, one I, the one I just created here. Uh, so I'll just save it. So I can go up here and you notice if I hover over these, it'll tell you, you got open project, new project. So we just did a new project. I can do open project and then browse. Uh, so for here, for instance, so this would be your student files. I can browse to example starts. And then I'll choose something like the test score app. And so notice I open that and then I'll need to sort of expand these folders here. And notice I've got a test score app here. And then I can run this just like normal. So I'll enter a couple scores here. Or, mm -hmm. And then 999 to end. Yeah, that works the way it should. Okay, so that's how to open an existing program. Or and you'll need to do this even if you're on if you create an application yourself. You you might you probably not going to do all of them in one sitting. You may need to come back to them and work on them over and over. So you'll want to be able to open those up. Okay, that's all.